Welcome to the channel Trim It Color. We are on process of making this vintage pocket watch. In our previous sessions, we have done the modeling and unwrapping in Maya. And in our last session, we have created the texture maps in Substance Painter. If you have missed any of these, the links are given in the description. You can check it out. In this particular session, we are going to render all those texture maps in Maya. So let's get started. In the last video, you have seen we created all these maps in Substance Painter. Color map, height map, metallic map, normal map and roughness map. These are the maps we created in Substance Painter. In this video, we'll check how to use those maps inside Maya. So if you can remember, we created this object in Maya and we divided this object into five parts like this and assign different different materials to it for the texturing in Substance Painter. You also have noticed I have created a base plane like this, a key light I wanted, so created this area light and one sky dome light for the environment. So the very first thing we are going to do in the sky dome light, let's browse uh, HDRI. Maybe we are going to use this HDR I have downloaded this from hdrhaven.com. They are having a very good collection. You also can check it out. So open. So let's render this. So we are getting something like this. All right. Opening the hypershade. So what I have done over here, I have created five different tabs for five different objects. So like this, clicking on this plus button, you can create a new tab. All right. So let's uh, rename it. This is the top cover. This is the bottom cover. This is the internal parts. This will be the gears. And this is the chain. And in each tab, I am creating a AI standard shader. So this will be for the top cover. So just rename it as top cover. For the bottom cover, the same I am going to do. Just rename it as bottom cover. This is the internal part. So, internal parts, for this also, the same thing, gears, and for this also, the same thing, I'm going to create, chain, alright, now, let's work one by one, so this is the top part, assign material to the selection, this is the bottom part. Right click, assign material to the selection. This is the internal parts. Assign material to the selection. This is for the gear. Assign material to the selection. You can see, if you name it properly, then it will be much more convenient for you to work. And this will be the chain. All right. Now, Let's go to Arnold and just render it. All right, we are getting something like this and you can see it's burning out. Uh, when we'll add the texture map, it will be all right. So let us start working with this. So this is the top cover. For everything, first I will be working with the height map and then gradually I'll be connecting all the other maps. And as you can understand, these materials I don't need anymore, so I'll just delete this. So taking our 2D texture, and let's browse the height map for the cover. So this is the cover top height map. So let's open it, and I'm selecting this node, and you can see the displacement material over here. So just dragging and dropping over here. And automatically you can see 
the displacement node has been created and now let's render this it's looking something like this now a few problems are there in this area you can see it's looking problematic why those problems are coming first of all let's select this displacement node okay and inside it the arnold property is there and inside that auto bump is there i'll just click it off and just render it you can see actually we are not getting any displacement because of the bump we were getting the detailing so this was not actually the displacement so first of all let's select this object and going to its shape node and inside arnold i'm going to the subdivision the type i'm using cat clark still nothing is coming iterations instead of one i'm making it two so something is visible that means what iteration is actually subdividing the geometry and trying to get the information from the displacement map so let's make it three so we are getting some information and what's happening over here so going to the displacement attributes and over here you can see bounce padding that is zero so making it one let's check and now it is all right and inside this also we are having auto bump so enable auto bump this auto bump is actually getting generated from the displacement map itself so what i'm going to do right now let's just disconnect it and this is the object i'll just keep this image and let's connect it once again and let's render it and if you can see the size has been increased that means the entire displacement information it is taking towards the positive side as we know some of the groups are going inside that means it is going towards the negative side and it is not taking that particular information so the file is selected make sure the color space is raw and second thing is inside the color balance make sure the alpha is luminance on but size problem is still there so this is the property alpha gain i will make it 0.5 still a little bit bigger but you can see it's reducing okay and alpha offset actually we can push it towards the negative side so the formula is whatever the value of the alpha gain alpha offset has to be negative 50 percent of that value so if that is 0.5 alpha offset has to be negative 0.5 25 now let's check you can see now there is no problem the detailing is coming exactly on that surface now selecting this if you are increasing this iterations from 3 to 4 we can have a little bit better result but for this i am keeping it 3 only i don't want to increase the rendering time so going back to the displacement and over here let's click on the auto bump one second so this is what we are getting from the height map so the steps i have done for this particular object connecting the height map i'll be doing exactly the same for all my objects so there will be a time lapse and i'll be doing all the objects and i will come back okay i have added the height map to all the objects so let's render and check all right and you can see i'm getting the height map information even all these areas the text i can see over here so my height map is ready now let's go to the other maps going to the hypershade once again this time let's go to the internal parts and i'll start creating all the maps for this and i'll concentrate on this area first so creating four files color metallic roughness normal so selecting the color browsing the color so this will be the color of the inside part 
this one just open and make sure it is srgb color only will be in srgb rest of the black and white map will be raw this one the metallic i want so this is a metallic open and it has to be raw and come over here alpha is luminance should be on so this will be the roughness map once again this will be raw alpha is luminance is on and this will be the normal map all right now let's connect it so this is the base color color map and let's make it one this is the metalness so this is our metallic map this is the roughness you can see so our roughness and going to the geometry and inside this you can see this bump mapping so let's connect this map the normal map as the bump map and automatically you can see the bump node has been created over here over here you need to do one thing tangent space normal you need to select instead of bump all right now let's check what we are getting out of these maps you can see it's already updated in the viewport let's check all right you can see we are getting all the informations in this area only one thing i think the bump depth i'll just reduce it a little bit all right this is fine and i'm going to do the same thing for all my objects so once again there will be a time lapse so i'll connect all the maps to all the materials in the very similar way and i will come back all right you can see i have added all the file textures to all the models it is looking something like this let's render it all right and you can see we are getting a decent result maybe a little more close up okay this area is burning out because of the light reflection and now my job will be to go to the arnold render setting and let's make camera sampling 4 and diffuse sampling 3 if we are increasing the sampling value our render quality will be enhanced and inside the ray depth transmission anyway we are not going to use so diffusion i'm making it 2 and specular i'm making it 2 in our hut tutorial i discussed about these settings in detail you can check it out let's close it and we can do the final rendering all right so this is what we have got from today's session and after this i have added a background texture on the table so we have got something like this so in this series you have learned how to model it then how to unwrap it then how to texture it in substance painter and how to create the maps over there and today you have learned how to render those maps in maya Hope you enjoyed today's session and you may subscribe the channel for the future videos. Thank you very much for watching.